Mm-hmm. Last you guys gathered here on Rhyme of the Frost Man, you had traveled to a mysterious island in the far, far north, made out of near solid ice. You were traveling along with Veli and Harpel based on information that you had gathered from another wizard of the arcane brotherhood, a man who was imprisoned in the uh, far northern prison of Rebels Inn by the name of Baelish Gaunt. Gaunt had told you that he, in his attempts to overthrow the pitiful people, small people that had run this area, in his studies had learned about a text named the Codicil of White, created by worshippers of the very Frost Maiden herself, that contained within it the power to crack open the ragged glacier itself, upon which you had learned lie a ancient city uh, by the name of Yithrin, a city of the Netherese Empire that contained extremely powerful magical artifacts. The Netherese built floating cities that surrounded the planet of Turiel back in the day of their empire, and this one had crashed long ago upon the fall of the empire and buried itself beneath the naked glacier. You had learned that perhaps this city would contain the types of arcane powers to uh, bring about the end of the curse that the Frost made and cast upon it, traveling to the island. You made your way through multiple dangers and ultimately encountered the very uh, earthly avatar of the Frost Maiden herself. First, as a uh, snowy owlbear, similar to those you'd encountered before, but walking on two legs with a powerful weapon of ice-cold breath, and then a woman made out of pure ice, eight feet tall. Nearly falling in combat, you finally managed to vanquish your foe, at least seemingly. The entity before you appeared as a star, a shard of glowing crystal ice, who essentially warned you that this was not the end. And then uh, teleported away, essentially, or rose out of the ceiling into the night sky. You had learned that the Frost Maiden had been using her energy to cast a spell upon the lands, bringing about this never-ending winter, and that uh, defeating her alone would not be enough to bring about the end of the spell. But you had weakened it substantially, at least to a degree, perhaps to the point where it could be potentially reversed. The Frost Maiden being weakened and the spell now potentially able to be reversed by some great arcane power, you seek the codicil of white buried somewhere deep within the keep that you find yourself in, this giant round frost giant skull of an island, uh, of, a, of a keep on the island of Sol- on the ancient island of Solstice. And here I will take you there now to the chambers upon which you met the the earthly avatar of the goddess herself before you managed to vanquish uh, at least this avatar in uh, in combat uh, however seemingly not defeat the goddess entirely I will bring you all there now allow me to set the audio accompaniment for this And I got to find the map. <laughs> Here we are. The wind and snow blows through the chambers that you're in to the open eyes of the skull that you uh, can see to your immediate south. The crystalline avatar of the uh, Frost Maiden After you had essentially felled the uh, snowy owlbear, it collapsed into a pile of what looked like semi-frozen fluid on the ground, out of which rose the avatar, the form of a woman. After defeating the woman, she shattered into a million forms, one of which being a glowing blue crystal that spoke to you and warned you that this was not the end and that your doom would yet come about. Uh, 
before it vanished from before your sight. You had learned from the frost giant below that you had elected not to have combat with that the frost maiden herself was casting this spell almost nightly to maintain the never-ending winter. Defeating her not strong enough to reverse the spell that had already been done, but now that it is not cast nightly, having defeated her at least first two avatars, potentially this horrific magic could be reversed by the right powers. You're there now, in this room. A throne room for a frost giant queen that uh, ancient long ago. And the uh, icicles that had fallen down on the ground and pierced many of you. Valian looks at you all and she says, I never thought that I would see combat with the very eyes of a deity herself. A real is not a major god, she is a lesser god, a demigod as it were, but to engage upon mortal combat with an immortal is a task that not even the most powerful wizards wish to undertake. I am impressed and somewhat frightened by your abilities. You've grown quite powerful. I think that together we can accomplish anything. But we need it. You wish to reverse the colossal winter flowing still above you. Knocking out the deity's earthly form, at least temporarily, I must tell you that simply defeating a form of a deity does not kill a god. She will reform stronger than before. And she will seek her vengeance. We must strike now to reverse the spell which she uses to feed her never-ending winter while you have the chance. If we don't act now, when she reforms stronger than before, I fear she will destroy all of us, and then there will be no hope. We need to find the codicil, the tome that will unlock the Treasures of Yithrin. And she sort of looks down. Yes. The treasures of Yithrin. And what do you all do? I think uh, I would like to suggest uh, exploring the space above us, uh, since I see a, a, what I believe is a staircase going up, um, perhaps we can find some clues about... Uh, yes, there is a staircase that is going upwards. So uh, it's kind of like... Go ahead. Go ahead. I just There's a staircase going upwards. Okay. Um, as Cadillac suggests that, I'll just look over and say, perhaps we could take a small break. Um, I'm a bit worse for wear after that battle. Perhaps a, a short rest, or at minimum, uh, perhaps I could do a prayer of healing. That seems like a smart idea to me. So you all are do, going to stop and take a rest? Do we think we have... I mean... Uh, no or Bella or Leonard, do you think we have enough time? I need a rest, a rest, for rest sure. or... I need something. Or Della requests Wait, a rest. Absolutely a short rest. There are no enemies immediately upon you. I'm going to let y'all talk about that for a sec. Uh, give me one sec. I will return while y'all talk about what you're going to do during your short rest. So assuming that the uh, top of this tower um, is one flight above us, that may be um, easiest to defend if we wanted to spend some time. Just afraid that it may not be empty. 
Right. Why, while you're sitting there, so you're taking a short rest? Yeah, let's do that here. Okay. Yeah. Or at least that's my vote. Mm -hmm. All right. Agreed. During your short rest period, I'm going to tell you something that you all hear. Um, you hear a colossal screeching sound above you. And then the sound of massive, which sounds like the flapping of absolutely colossal wings. And then you can tell that it is moving away. The screech sound gets quieter and the flapping of colossal wings begins to recede. And you can tell that whatever was above you with colossal wings and screeching sounds. And you've heard dragons before. It doesn't sound like a dragon. You at least know that. You've heard the roar of dragons. It seems to have left. What are you all doing during your short rest? Uh, being grateful that we didn't go up the stairs already. Mm. <laughs> oh, that would have been a really bad decision, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, that would have been a really bad decision. Yeah, that was my bright idea uh, that I contributed. And it was promptly shot down. Well, the, be glad you didn't. You know, I'll bet it was just a really creaky ornithopter. What do you think, Leonard? Yeah, uh, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Its name Definitely. was Its name was Jojo, and it likes to eat you. Man, I forget how good Weller Special Reserve is, Kenny. It's so good. It is tasty. All right. Back well, by the way, uh, Jeffrey, um, if you had uh, background stuff going, um, it is not coming through. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, I have a background sound. Hang on. Just FYI. Yeah. The ornithopter carried it off. How about now? Here. Now thank it's you for, through. Yeah, thank you for telling me, please. Uh, if ever sound is... It's finicky, and if I don't do it right, the sound will disappear. What do I roll for hit die again? Uh, there is a thing on D&D Beyond that is hit die, but it is I'm essentially... For it. it is essentially your uh, constitution saving throw, basically. Or it's your constitution mod, basically. D20 plus your con mod, plus your level. Oh, Lord. It's D20 plus your con mod plus your level, I think. Okay. Or, no. No, that's not right. Hang on. I'm looking uh, for the hit die button. It is whatever your hit... Yeah, it... Hang on. I'll find it for you. On D&D Beyond. Yeah. I'm not so seeing it. So if you click the short rest button at the top of the screen... Yeah, that'll uh -huh. do it. It's weird. It never works the way I think it should. Yeah, I no. tried. I clicked it, and it did take short rest, and then nothing happened. And like, so, I'll I'll select multiple, but it only ever seems to roll one. I don't think it rolled any. All right, I'm opening your I'm opening your character. Hang on. And beyond. So that's you. Okay. So that's. You and your character. All right. So you're at 19 of 68 hit points right now. Click the short rest button. And then uh, the hit die are the little, like, tick boxes there. See where it says roll hit die? Your hit die is a D10 plus 2. And you need to reset that because... Uh, are you rolling 4? I managed to roll a hit die for you. You there, Odella? Nope, she walked away. The reset button doesn't seem to work, which is weird.
Okay, when you hit roll a short rest, it doesn't uh, necessarily roll hit die. Okay, Ordella, you have eight hit die. How many of your eight hit die would you like to roll? Um, there are D10 guess, plus two. Uh, I guess four of them. All right, so I'm going to roll four of these for you. So one, two, three, four. All right, so you get back 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, that's not enough. <laughs> Might as well just roll all of them. Uh, hang on. You got 12 plus 4 plus 8 plus 3. You get back 27? You wanted to roll more? Yeah, hang on. Let me see. 27. Yeah, give me one more. One more? Mm hmm. Take it. Thank you. So that gives you 36 back. Plus 19 that you have brings you up to 55 of 68. Yep. So you heal for 36 total. There you go. I applied it. Thank you. All right. What's everybody else doing? Jeff, I'm going to look in this room. Okay. Uh, as you look in there, what you find is the what looks like the bedchamber of an old frost giant queen. Uh, there's wrecked furnishings, suggesting it was once used as a bedchamber. A bitterly cold wind blows down that staircase on the other side. There's snow accumulated at the bottom, and this just looks like it's part of the bedchambers. There are, like, smashed up bits of frost giant furniture made out of ice and things. Is there a chest or a chest of drawers or anything? There are uh, pieces of sort of broken furniture bits and stuff. Are you uh, pondering yeah, through those? Okay, roll me a uh, investigation check. Yeah, I'll just take 20. Yeah, no, you won't. You're going to roll <laughs> me an investigation check. Fifteen. That's 15. not That's not bad at all, sir. Okay. Uh, with a 15, you do find uh, something buried underneath all of those things um, that catches your eye. Uh, it is because it is human sized, which is a little bit odd to you. But there is an extremely fine uh, piece of what looks like silken rope. Everything is frozen except this rope. It doesn't have a bit of ice on it at all, which. It's why it catches your eye. It's very strange. Like, everything is coated in ice. Except this. I'm gonna grab it. You grab it, and it feels great in your hand. Like, smooth, silky. It feels amazing. Right on your hands. Like, it's just great. I'm gonna uh, try to... And now you're cursed. Tie it to something. Are you investigating the rope? Yeah. Uh, what languages do you speak? I speak common, deep speech, gnomish, and primordial. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Okay. Um, there, there is a, uh, there is a like metal clasp around each end of the rope on the other ends. Um. Hmm which is weird it's about 60 feet long and the metal clasp um has a word written on it and it's actually written in gnomish of all things <laughs> which is really weird but it is and uh the word is the gnomish word for stiffy you can tell me what that word is Or stiffen. Stiffen. 
But that's what it says around there. All right, I'm going to read out the gnomish command word for stiffen. Mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, it's Flindelblor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you read out Flindelblor, and uh, the rope, um, where you were sort of thinking about the uh, rope going, it just zings over there. Just shoop. And uh, it animates and uh, moves towards the destination that you were thinking about. And uh, automatically, like, ties itself around it. I'm going to think about a different spot. It untangles itself, and then wherever you tell it to go, by saying Flindelborp, it zings over there and ties to it and stiffens up. Yes! You have a rope of climbing. A rope of climbing. I'm going to name it. You already have Flindelblor. Flindelblor. And to pick the easier name. I'm going to make you say it out loud every time you use it. Flindelblor. Flindelblor. Okay, what's everybody else doing? You found a rope of climbing. Alright, I'm going to go back to the other folks and show off my rope. Yep. You can tell it to uh, fasten itself or to knot itself or unknot itself. It moves uh, 10 feet on each of your turns until it reaches its destination. It's 60 feet long. And uh, so it moves 10 feet, a, 10 feet a turn. So if you're in combat and you're like, I want to tie it to this thing 60 feet away, well, it's going to take a while for it to get there. It doesn't go fast. Okay, it moves slow, but it will go there. Yep. So you got to use it and think about what you want to do with it before you get into a combat situation. Unless it's 10 feet away, in which case it's right there. All right. What about you, Granite Guts? Are you uh, going up those steps to see what the giant squawking was? I am curious, but I'm going to uh, hold off going up until um, I feel comfortable that... Uh, oh! Uh, there appears to be something on the other side of this staircase. Um, I guess I explore over here a little bit. Yeah, there is... Uh, de detritus? Detritus? Detritus. There. Uh, bits and pieces of broken wood and uh, smashed up bits of the former uh, palace inhabitants covered over with ice and uh, snow, mostly. There's blowing snow about two feet thick at the base of the staircase. Got it. So basically, you, this is just like a storage area or something? You, well, I mean, are you, you you can dig around in it if you want. No guarantee yeah, there's yeah, anything Yeah, I'll sort there. of poke around things with my foot and see if I can see anything interesting in this just so mound your, of stuff. So you're poking with your foot? Yeah, I'm sort of moving things around. Just searching. Okay. Roll investigation, then. Okay. Ooh. It's pretty good for foot moving. Uh, yeah, the, the interesting thing that you find is um, you find a, uh, a quiver with... Uh, do you use a bow and arrow? I do not. You find a quiver with three arrows that look quite well made. Mm. Uh, amongst all the uh, detritus. No bow, just a quiver with uh, with uh, several, uh, we'll say, uh, roll me a d6. Let's see okay. how many arrows are in that quiver. One. <laughs> uh, we'll say a d6 plus three, so there are uh, four arrows. Okay. I'm not sure that anybody in our party uses bow and arrows. Do they? I don't, I don't know. know. I'll, I'll ask when I um, when I return to the group. But that's what you find. Are you picking it up? Yes, absolutely. Got they're me quite some, well. Got me some they're toothpicks. Qu they're quite well made. Cool. They're very well made. But you find uh, uh, four arrows. Uh, what about you, uh, Zarya? Are you doing anything else besides patching your wounds up? 
Um, I think I would have been attempting to like meditate, but um, bits of the Goliaths are not Goliath. The uh, Frost Giants' uh, words keep echoing in my mind, um, and I find myself just muttering the word Escara, um, which I believe is what we were told was the uh, rock's name that a real most likely just rode off on above us. Yeah, or yes, that was indeed the name of the giant bird that you had been previously told about that you have put together that you probably heard. Now, whether or not she herself flew off on it mm -hmm. seems like a reasonable thought. Maybe she morphed into it. Maybe she rode it. But uh, yeah, that seems to be what left is a rock. Yeah, I don't think Zari would have ever encountered that, so I don't know that she would really understand what it was, but that sounded large. So Real big. I think she's just she's just uh, kind of packing up her stuff from the short rest and kind of thinking about that and muttering the word Escara under her breath. Yeah, real big. Real, real big. Iskara. Or, yeah, Iskara. Iskara. I think it's actually Iskara, but same difference. I put an extra A in there. It's, I, it is Iskara. Okay. Are you digging around where um, Leonard was, if there's anything else? Uh, you're going back into the, the like smashed up bedroom area. There's also the throne room. All right, roll investigation in there. Add 10. Nothing. Ten? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, you find uh, the most interesting thing you find amongst all this like broken things is Sox. a no is a small little bottle. It is a vial, and it's the only one that is broke, not broken, and doesn't have and actually has something in it. Mm. As you sort of move it around, whatever substance it is that is in it is uh sort of slow moving like it's well, got some turned the emperor into a llama like it's got some viscosity to it it is the same sort of vial that would turn an emperor into a llama yes it looks just like that mm -hmm. but whatever substance is in there is you can sort of like see or feel it it's viscous and it sort of moves very slowly and mm -hmm. you think that might be because it's so cold here it's just like frozen but it hasn't frozen solid whatever it is and it's it is the only like vial of anything that uh, was not uh, smashed up. Cool. Taking it. Heck yeah! Put it okay. in my pocket for later. All right, you got it. Write down. Ordella has magical potion. No, magical you have no idea. Does Ordella think it's a magical potion? Ordella has no idea what it is. Who knows? It could be I don't know something to cook with. Having what it, we normally eat. It is human liver droppings. Liver droppings? Bile. Human bile. Made excellent for excellent for frost giant cuisine. Probably still better than some of the food that? we've had. Hmm? Huh? What'd you say, Leonard? It's great for a snack. Yeah, it's it's what they use for salt. It's better than some of the food we've had. All right. So your short rest is ended. You have found some strange items. You found a rope of climbing. You found four arrows that are well made, and you find a mostly smashed up room vial. with one f vial of some sort of strange viscous substance. Write down on your character sheet, a uh, vial of viscous substance. Oh, one thing I'll tell you about it, I'll tell you about it, is that the substance is white. It's like a glass vial. You can see in it, it's white. I'll look over at Cadillac and say, upstairs then? To the upstairs. Oh, by the way, 
Um, does anybody use uh, bows or arrows? Because uh, I found some around the corner here, and I, I don't really have a use for them. Would anybody like them? I think the only person who has used a ranged attack in this campaign is Ordella, but that may have been a crossbow. Well, we're muted, Ordella. Yeah, let me check here. I'm just adding this in, and then... Yeah, I just have a crossbow. Mm. But hey, maybe I'll find something. Okay. Um, I, I guess I hand them over to you then. Sweet. So that'll okay. be that'll be four four really spiffy arrows. Uh, Ordella, you are able to uh, fashion these into crossbow bolts if you so choose. Oh, sweet. Really nice arrows. All right, you're going upstairs. What's the worst that could happen? Eaten. Um. All right, you all make your way upstairs, and as you do so, you come out onto the roof of this uh, structure, surrounded by the crown of uh, ice ice thorns of this uh, of this thing. And at the top, you see the icy crown encircled. Uh, the fortress doubles as a battlement rooftop. Each prong of the crown extends 40 feet above the roof line, and the prongs have 10 foot wide gaps between them. Situated in the middle of the roof is a nest that is about 30 feet in diameter. Whatever made this nest, it's not there. And you think to yourself, thank God. Or gods, as it so were. Is there anything inside the nest? Uh, you climb in there and look? Sure. Okay. Uh, you do find something. You find a five foot tall, uh, silvery looking egg. Uh, it's really heavy, about 150 pounds, but there is an egg there. You also find a beautiful-looking harp. And a, uh, there is a pendant. And there is a, a wooden chest. All this is in the nest? All this is in the nest. Well, gee... As, I found uh, a weird vial of something and he finds a no, pendant. No, 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 <laughs> This is just what is in Dang. the chest. He doesn't necessarily get all of that. This is just what's in there. You all, I assume, if I assume if Zarya is climbing in the chest or climbing into the nest, she's telling you all what's in there, right? Or someone else is probably following her as they notice that she has found something. Uh-uh. I'm not getting in there. As Mama might come back. Zero I'm, out of ten. I am literally yeah. tiptoeing towards the, the uh, to the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing the precise opposite of rummaging around in the nest. Okay. I'll, so what I'll you found is a. Um, okay. It, it is covered in bird droppings and has a heavy padlock on it. Okay. Uh, I'm not much for subtleties. Can I use my axe on the padlock? Uh, yes, you sure can. Uh, make me an attack roll against it. Mm -hmm. That hits. Roll the damage. Okay, yeah. With a clang, you just make a loud smashing noise and just the padlock just falls off and gives way. Just falls to the ground. Okay, I'll open it. Uh, inside of it, you find 320 gold pieces. There is a golden ring with a black pearl 
set into a fixture shaped like a whirlpool. Uh, you also find a spell scroll, Zarya. Okay. You do magic, right? I do. So then you can know what the spell scroll is. It is a spell scroll of mass cure wounds. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, I will absolutely begin emptying the chest. Um, it'll probably take me a minute to get 320 gold out. Yeah, 320 gold pieces, this golden ring with a black pearl on it, and a spell scroll of mass cure wounds. Um, there was also, not in the chest, a bloodstone pendant. Yeah. And with an electrum chain, and an exotic, pretty looking harp uh, with uh, zircon gemstones on it. Ooh. And then, then the big egg. A big egg. The big okay. egg. Who's yeah, gonna I'm... put that in the pocket? <laughs> kind of want to smash the egg, um, but I'm Mama gonna... be angry. Mama's gonna be angry either way. Uh, all right, I'll grab the pendant, the gold, the gold ring, the spell scroll, um, the harp. What size is this? Is this like large, like almost human size kind of style, uh, or it? doesn't say we'll say it is something you carry in your hands okay i'll grab the harp too i'll leave everything else okay so what are you leaving the egg and uh just that's the egg it chest i guess the yeah. egg and the empty chest yeah okay um i will divide up the 320 gold so because i'm gonna forget it i'm gonna tell you right now um the uh The uh, uh, bloodstone pendant is not magical. It is worth 250 gold pieces. So yeah. you can sell that and divide it. And the uh, ring is also, unfortunately, not magical. But it is a very nice piece worth 320 gold pieces. Okay. You do not have to split that with everybody. The harp is also, unfortunately, not magical. It is worth 750 gold pieces. The chest was, and you gave that up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the chest is a magical chest. And now it's disappeared. No. It walked away. Okay, um, I will divide up the gold, and then I'll hang on to everything else for now. Um, um, in total, you've got... Uh, You've got 1,320 gold worth of things and then 320 gold worth of just gold. So a total earnings of 1,640 gold pieces. Okay. Uh, and you're everybody... dividing up the 320 and keeping the rest. I mean, for now, uh, yeah, once no, no. we get to a place we can sell it, I might... No, no, I just tell you the value of it now so you can write it down and know it because I will right. not remember. Right, uh, so it would be 53 gold a piece once that's divvied out. All right, if he's divvying it, everybody can mark 53 gold. Thank you, Zarya. Thank you. But you do You're have the, the you do have the spell scroll. Yeah, I, that one's mine. Should we leave this egg? That's up to you guys. Uh, nobody's even rolled nature on it or anything to try to figure out, is it the bird egg or what is it? That's true. I think it would be interesting to investigate in the room below us, not in the nest. It's like 150 pounds and your size, Master Dwarf. Oh, roll it. We'll just roll it. I got a wheelbarrow. We'll just put it in there and carry it around the wilderness. Um, I mean, Pelek, you think this would make the greatest omelet? Ha! Will um, it fit in um, the bag of holding? I have a, a bottle of human bile that would probably season the egg very well. I'm all about mm -hmm. nature, so I'm not sure that I would want to, like, you know, crack Eat it nature. open. Yeah, I think I would prefer to, like, you know, does anybody want to pet 
ornithopter or whatever's in this. <laughs> 150. It's a 150. Pterodactyl. Not a 150 pound omelet. Probably not a hundred. Think of the on. possibilities with that omelet. We could just have shrub wads sit on it until it hatches. <laughs> true, true. I'm a shrub. <laughs> do, you, um, do you call do you call out to him? Be like, I'm a shrub. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, if we're going to investigate it, I, I, I would. I'm, I'm happy to help, but like, I would prefer not to do it up here in the nest. I'm gonna watch right. nesting with the baby. I will try to push the egg up and out of the nest. Okay, uh, you're able to do this without much problem. It's heavy, but oh, you're able God. to roll it. <laughs> it's like it's gonna crack in the floor. Um, no. even if, even though you're like seven feet tall and I'm like two and a half, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah, you're able Talk to do accounts. this. You're able yep. to roll it. It's okay. As you roll it, you notice that the egg is interesting because it is like silvery and uh, kind of um, like a little bit of like. Uh, interesting kind of scale to it or something like silvery kind of scale on it it looks almost scaly which is not what you thought about as a bird but uh it's a dragon egg it's a dragon and it, it's egg. silvery and scaly and leonard's gonna sit on it which as which as you're rolling which as you're rolling it around uh cadillac being a nature person sort of struck you as a little strange doesn't look like any bird egg you've ever seen before. Right. Like sil silvery and scaly. Um, I uh, say, I, th I, th I think this is something we should keep intact and um, see what happens with it. This this could prove this could prove delightfully handy. Not as normal. Or, or catastrophically wrong. <laughs> Um, all right. I, I vote we go downstairs. Uh-huh. <laughs> we, we've still got to find the coat of seal in white. Are you rolling this egg down the steps? Oh, God. Are you going to, how are you going to move this 150 pound egg? Um, I'm going to attach my rope of climbing to it. Okay. And see if I can pull it. Now we have a wrecking ball. I don't know that it's a... It's not a levitating <laughs> rope. But it'll it's still wrap not, around it. I thought the rope of climbing... Is that not here's what... what the, here's what the rope of climbing had says. In the Storm's King Thunder campaign? Uh, but he also had something else that could levitate, I think. Silk rope weighs three pounds, can hold 3,000 pounds. If you hold one end of the rope and speak an action where the rope animates, as a bonus action, you could command the other end to move towards the destination you choose. The end moves 10 feet on your turn. When you first command it in 10 feet on each of your turns to reach its destination, the maximum length, you can tell it to not itself. So it will move through the air at 10 feet. It can hold 3,000 pounds. I guess you could spam this. And like tie it around the egg and tell it to like continuously move in a direction. Just super slow. Just real. You'd be the really slowest egg moving machine in the world. Yeah, but I can't hold three thousand pounds, and it can't. That's right. Yeah. Okay, you can do this. It's gonna be weird, but you can definitely do it. You're very slow moving. What was it he had? I thought he had something else. He had you had two of them, and he laid them out on the ground or something. I can't it remember, but I, I seem to remember that we were like carrying around something like on a stick. Yeah, you had made a tensor's disc. Yeah. It was like a helm. It was bones or a helmet or something like. I don't remember honestly. Oh, I don't remember. 
Anyway, I think you had a levitation magical item. Or something. Anyway. Anyway. You're, you're able to tie the egg around a rope of climbing and sort of begin to kind of move it. Do, 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 do. Okay. Still looking around this downstairs floor for the codicil of white. Okay, you go back down to the palace level and uh, nothing. I'm going to bring you back there. You've got the egg down here now. And you're back in the palace room where you were before. There is another set of steps that you came from down there in that lower level. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm going to go down again. Okay. Everybody following? Seems like a good idea to me. The only Belly thing and I'm Harpel for Belly is... and Harpel looks at you all as you come dragging this and she says what on earth are you doing with the dragon egg? Told I knew dragon it. Egg. Dragging, dragging it, of course. Yeah, it's a, it's a dragon she says, egg. Dragging a dragon egg. She says, and you think that its mother won't come wishing to eat us? It didn't sound like a dragon. I think somebody kidnapped the dragon egg. Do you know what kind of dragon it is? A white one? Big one. That sounds bad. A very well-behaved one, and his name will be Jim. <laughs> what if it's Avakaz and Methelrod? Avakaz is an antibiotic. Arvitreus. Arvitreus? She says, the dragon that nearly killed us all? Well, that yeah, we escaped I mean, we... with our lives from? Details. Maybe? That would be even worse. Listen, I could support making a giant omelette. <laughs> but I don't... I am a bit hungry. But I don't know about carrying that thing. Uh, Can so you make you... an omelette with a dragon egg? So you wind up here. Down here in the basement area. Um... You're back in the banquet room. And as you head back down, you see again the room that you saw previously that had the ice method sitting on the ledge, sort of watching you. And uh -huh. uh, there is another set of steps heading downwards in that room. Yeah, so really our two options- With the snowy with the snowy mist that's flowing down the steps. Yeah, so we've got the room here that has the um the giant in it guarding the treasure trove. Yep. But in the treasure trove, we we didn't at least notice a book that could be the codex in white. Uh, you. Oh, that's right. You did open it. No, you did, you you did, did open, open it, and you did try to take it. So you know what's in it. Um, you know that there were four golden rings the size of frost giants. You know there was a shield with white dragon scales uh -huh. on it. You know there was a statue of Thrym, and you know there was a jug with multiple spigots on it. And you know there was a lot of gold and copper and silver pieces there. Alright, I guess we're going down then. Okay. Down you head. Let me put all of you in one place. As you enter this room with the little ice methods, they all just watch you. And, Leonard, you know that they're not statues, that they're alive. Mm -hmm. And you can see their little eyes moving as they watch you all descend down this uh, staircase. I'll take you there to the bottom now. You descend down. When you reach the bottom of the steps... Let me put you actually in the room there, if you like. When you reach the very bottom of the steps, I need to change the audioscape, because it's now different. different. It's peaceful and quiet and restful and reverent. It's certainly, and less, it's certainly less windy. As you enter the bottom, the staircase descends into a vaulted chamber. 
A nine foot high uh, railing of sculpted ice hugs the staircase as uh, hugs the staircase as it descends to the chamber floor. Uh, which, like the stairs, is smooth and gleaming. There is a walrus at the bottom, as big as an elephant, and he is sliding around, running from side to side in the room, and he kind of jumps and slides on his belly across the ice, going, oh, 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 oh. and then he gets to the other side of the ice and he starts running the opposite direction and jumps and then slides his belly on the ice. He goes, row, 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 row. And he seems to be having a grand old time rolling and sliding on the ice, paying you little heed. Um, well, that looks like fun. Yeah, I guess. Maybe... I'll open this door. Okay. Uh, let me do that. All right. One moment. Oh, okay. I'm gonna... You, op you open a door there. And just a minute. The walrus, uh, sliding around. Hang on just a second. Uh, uh, you open the door and uh, the walls of this room are sort of oddly shaped uh, they're etched with elaborate panoramas of winter scenes and set into the back wall that you see directly across from you Leonard is a door with an inscribed large snowflake on it and there is a single word carved into the lintel above it. And on this door, the word carved into it above the uh, above the snowflake door is the it is in common and it says Cliber knock. It says cruelty. And the you hear behind you a noise. And you hear a, and then a jump and a slide, 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 across the snow. And then, as it stops right before you, you hear a voice, and it goes, Well, hello! What are you all doing here? <laughs> and you turn, and you see that it is the walrus that is speaking common to you. Huh. I guess I can speak common. <laughs> well, speak well, he looked, ran across and said, "Hello, what are you all doing here?" <laughs> I'll, I'll put my head back out this door. Hello, and new I'll friends. Just, hello, and I'll, we're Toots Crew, and we're hello, here Toots Crew. For, um, we're we're bringing my our, name's my name's Ukumba. Ukumba, we're just taking our our egg friend out for a walk and looking for a codicil in white. You're looking for a codicil? Yeah. I don't know what a codicil is. a book. Uh, a book? Oh, 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 oh. I know about books. I know about books. The druids that awakened me used books. And the frost, the, the worshippers of this, of the lady, uh, they used books. Well, they keep them in the vault. There's a vault where the servants store their treasures. How do they get into that vault? Is that is that over he says, here? He says it's to the south. It's down here. It's down there. But 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 but, but there's more. You have to do something to get in. You, you gotta. It, they you, you're supposed to pass the tests. I was supposed to guard this place. They woke me up and they said, Ukuma, your job is to guard this place. Keep all the bad people away. But that's boring and I don't like it. We're not I bad just, people anyway, so. I didn't see that. You're talking to me. You're nice people. I like you very much. And then he says, uh, we well, you got to pass the tests. 
there's one test for each aspect of the of the lady. She's mean, so cruelty is one test. And then there's another one called endurance. There's another one that's uh, isolation. And then there's another one that I have a hard time pronouncing. It's like her per 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 Persper perspiration. Perspiration. Yeah, that's it. How do you do you know what they had to do to pass the test of cruelty? That one that one doesn't sound fun. Mm -mm, I don't know. I don't want to pass the test. I don't want nothing to do with passing no tests. No. I just like to slide on the ice, and he turns and he runs, 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 and jumps, and he slides across the ice, and he goes, "What to see is fun." Uh, Leonard is going to walk toward this little opening in the wall, and like slide, and see if he can slide. Yep, you sure can. It's just a, it's just a little alcove. There's nothing in there. Nothing. No books. No scrolls. Nope. No directions. No books. No. Nope. No books. No scrolls. No secret directions. Nothing scrolled. Ukuma, up all Ukuma, the place. Ukuma runs over and slides up to the door and goes, "I can't fit through there. What are you doing, little man?" And he sort of sticks his head and turns his head sideways and he sort of like starts banging his head against. It. He goes, "I don't fit." There's hey! nothing in here. But so but gonna... I can't go in I can't go in there. What, what if I wanted to go? Of? Get out of there. What are the walls made of, Joe? Solid ice. Okay. I'm gonna firebolt this wall. No! Oh! Oh! And he sort of runs backwards. To open it up enough so that he can go in there and explore. Yeah, you do. You you manage to open it up. He looks at it and goes, Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it immediately runs over there and slides into the room and goes, Hey, there's nothing in here. I told you. And then he runs over to the other one. On the other side, he goes, But what about this one? Okay, fine. I'm before Yay! I it, I'm going to go look inside. Absolutely nothing in there. Okay. Then I'll open him up some room in the wall. He goes, yay, and slides into it. And then he goes, as he's in there, he goes, oh, you should hear, a, oh. Okay. And then I'll, I'll let everybody, well, everybody heard him tell us about the trial of cruelty, but I know this one is cruelty. Yes. Uh, cruelty. He said, what was it? He said, he said, cruelty, endurance, isolation, and perspiration, because he can't remember what the last one is. <laughs> or pronounce it really well. And you corrected perspiration, and he just went with it. Right. So, uh, do, do we want to try to get into these doors? Do we want to start with the trial of cruelty? Or maybe endurance? I think cruelty sounds intimidating, and so I'm kind of inclined to go ahead and get it over with. That's sort of what I was thinking, but like, what if we have to be mean to Shrubwad to get it in? Oh, well, hmm, I'm sure that won't be the case. We could probably right. just like punch Harkus in the face. I mean, wait, will that count? Uh, actually, <laughs> that's an interesting point. So anything that, that could be compromised here that we're... Okay, so um, I... Uh, say, Akumba, uh, I have a friend who you may like to meet. And I pull out Shrubwad. And the shrub oh, gets out and goes, <laughs> And Akumba runs up to him and goes, Hello, new friend. And Shrubwad goes, They're not going to eat me, are you? He goes, Oh, no, 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 no. I eat fishes. Okay. So y'all have both been uh, awakened, so maybe uh, you can sort of talk about that to each other and uh, is this a, tell uh, Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you touching me here? Is this a play? Is this a play then? Or are you leaving me with this guy? 
I, Sherbot, you are on a very important task here, which is to get to know our new friend here. We think he's friendly and we really like him, but uh, we it's very important to us that uh, we get your opinion on him. Okay, well, I guess. What's your opinion on Sawyer Pooch? <laughs> <laughs> And, he, and Okuma looks at him and goes, I don't know what the pH is. And they begin to have a conversation that seems very, each of them talking one-sided about things. The other one has no idea what they're talking about. Love it. I was roasted by evil druids. Oh, I was too. <laughs> but I'm not evil. I just like to have fun. Do you want to ride on my back while we slide? Oh, this is lovely. They have a play date. Okay, so, so, so Shrubblood can, is, can now not be compromised by the din of cruelty. <laughs> All right. Cruelty's this way. Yeah. Okay. You step into the chamber of this oddly shaped room with the phrase cruelty written above it. Um, and uh, bu- 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 there is a door on the opposite side with cruelty on it. It has a handle on said door. opening the door I guess so is, is everybody with me I believe so okay yeah then I'll, I'll open the door okay you open the door give me just a moment please I should have been more prepared for you to be here no it's fine we could have jumped off the building and then what uh, our giant rock would have eaten you I am, uh, hang on. I am actually prepped for this. It's just a matter of, like, now I have to find the right map and stuff. So give me, like, 30 seconds here. I got way too many maps. You very slowly, in Dragon Ball Z time, begin opening the door. (laughs) Next time on Dragon Ball Z, you will continue to open the door for an entire episode. Where is it? Jesus. And then face, and face, and then face. Yeah. Uh, uh, we got nine episodes of powering up. Alright, I gotta get Bailey in here. Hang on. Alright. You open the door. And all of a sudden... Things go bright, and the whole world changes. And all of a sudden, you find yourselves not standing where you were before. You're not there at all. You are in a different place. Your surroundings vanish in a flurry of snow and ice, and when your vision clears, you find yourself standing at the edge of a camp, its tents holding fast against an absolute raging blizzard. As you look around at each other, you all notice that floating above your head is a snowflake that is seemingly glowing above you. There are uh, multiple what look like ragged barbarians of the tribes that you've been told about uh, standing around you. And all of a sudden the uh, they uh, surround you completely. As you look around the people are haggard and uh, just weather beaten. They are thin looking and uh, just entirely beaten down. You find yourselves without essentially any of your magical items. You're itemless here, with the exception of non-magical weapons. So you have like your axes and swords and non-magical things, but all of like your powerful magical items seemingly have not teleported with you, or maybe this is an illusion, or an uncertain. Um, and as you're there, 
you notice these like weather eaten people you look around and you see the bodies of sled dogs and they have been stripped of every bit of meat off of them uh like carved up and every bit of like tissue and flesh has been taken off of them and you can see very clearly that these people here are starving to death and um yeah that's what you see um you are surrounded by them and all of a sudden they draw spears at you and begin shouting in a uh, language you don't understand and then uh, one of them says mm, comes up and speaks common to you and says they are emissaries of, of you we owe them our respect and they sort of uh, looking at the snowflakes slating above you they sort of lower their weapons a little bit and they say take them to Chief Gunvolt and uh, that's what's happening what do you guys do Where, where does it look like they're taking us? To the uh, chieftain's circle in the center of the camp is where they seem to be starting to walk you. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll go with them, I guess. Okay. They uh, bring you forward <laughs> into the center of the camp. There the chief uh, stands and looks at you all. And he says, mm, Blessings be upon us, I suppose. Emissaries of the great frosted maiden who died in our darkest times. <clears throat> and you see before you, on the other side of the fire, there are four uh, people. They are kneeling down on the ground, and their hands and legs are bound, and all of them are old like very very old and they are bound at the uh, ankles and the knees and um, Chief Gunvald says food we do not have sacrifices must be made he says these these elders give their lives for the good of the tribe and meat shall be restored and he hands you, Leonard, a knife, and he says, Slay them all in the name of a real, such that we may eat, O emissary. I don't... What's the snowflake doing? It's just floating above your head. I'm assuming our egg did not come with us. Mm -mm. Okay. Sure didn't. Nothing but like you have some basic weapons on you, non-magical things. So. And he looks over at you, Cadillac, and he says, the tribe must eat. These men are doomed to die. You have, you bring honor in the name of the Frost Maiden. It is your honor to do the slaying. And he uh, takes this big, like, machete kind of knife and sort of moves it over to you, uh, Granite Guts, and says, Oh, emissary of Ariel, it is our honor to allow you to perform the sacrifice in her name. Cut them down such that our people may eat and live. So I, am I to understand that uh, 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 these individuals uh, are, 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 are themselves to be dinner? Yes. G G glory to Ariel. And he pushes the dagger, the like machete into your hands and says, cut them down such that we may eat them. Um, I heave a big sigh, but 
Um, I sort of murmur to myself about the greater good and all of that, and we literally walked through the cruelty door. We did this to ourselves. I'm, uh... And so, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're, this is... This is in, this is a uh, we are eating the muffins we baked for ourselves here. Right, walking into um, the door with a test dedicated to followers of the evil ice goddess. Yep. Um. um so just do it. Let's do cruelty first. Get it out of the way <laughs> to get uh, it out. Do any of the um? Do any of the uh, people look worse off than the others? They're all pretty old looking. There's the four of them that have their hands and the four of them that have their hands and feet bound look worse off for sure. They're old. This is imaginary. So, so all a dream. Roll me insight, Leonard. This is imaginary. Insight. This is imaginary. Leonard is the best damn illusion you've ever seen. I'm going to keep saying this is imaginary, this is imaginary, this is imaginary, and level Firebolt at the nearest one. Because if we're going to turn him into meat, may as well cook it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you blast the Firebolt, and it goes straight through his chest. He lets out a scream and says, Oh, you murdered me, no! And falls over dead on the ground, blood pooling out. And uh, the chieftain looks at you and says, slay them, O oh emissary. To you, Granite Guts. Um, is this a sharp blade that I have, or is it sort of butter yes. knifey? No, it's sharp. Okay. Um, I do my best to um, make my aim true uh, towards, the, me, uh, towards the jugular here. I want it to be quick. Roll me an, roll me an attack roll. Okay. Um, so, um, should I do it against... Just roll me a d20 plus 5, we'll say. Just roll the d20. Straight up d20 roll. Uh, you cut him. Oh, it's God! It's not fat. It's not fast, and it's not oh, pretty. Jesus. But he's, <laughs> you slash his neck, and blood <laughs> begins to roll out over his, uh, over the dagger, and it lands on pain. your... The blood, granite guts. The blood from his neck that he's bleeding out on lands on your uh, boots and on your like pants, and sort of stains them a bit. And he falls over dead. And uh, the chieftain looks over at you, um, you Ordella, and hands you the dagger and says, "Oh, emissary of a real slay oh them in God. my name." Lord Jesus. Okay. All right. Well, uh. I really don't like that. They okay. begin cutting. They begin immediately cutting up the firebolted and the slashed one and filleting them into food bits. I'll kill wow. two more if you don't want to. Do what? I'll kill two more if you don't want to. The knife is handed to Ordella. Okay. Ah. All right. Well, I go up to one, and I guess I cut one. Okay. I get. <laughs> I'm not gonna make. I'm not. Make, yeah. make me an attack roll. Okay. So roll, G20, roll G20. D20. D20. Just give okay. me a D20 roll. D20. Don't roll a two. Uh, yeah, you oh cut God. him. You you cut him real good. You slash him, and he falls down in an instant. And the last one, they look to you, uh, Zarya. And he says, "Oh, emissary of the great ice queen, the last honor is yours to promote our great survival." I'll take the dagger and I'll look at Leonard and I'll say. It's an illusion, and I just like caught my head to the side as if to like question. It's an illusion. And it's an illusion. It's an illusion. <laughs> and I repeat it again. I say it's an illusion, and I'll walk forward and um, I'll 
Just stab him in the chest. Yeah, it, uh, make me an attack roll. Yeah. Oh. Uh, as you do so, uh, the, uh, character, uh, sort of falls over and bleeds out and the blood lands on you. And as this happens, everything blinks and disappears. And you find yourself immediately transported back to where you were uh, before in the cave of ice. And um, when you arrive, you hear a voice that says, you have passed. Compassion makes you vulnerable. Let cruelty be the knife that keeps your enemies at bay. And Granite Guts, you are horrified to realize that the blood is still on you. With a horrifying re re realization that this is not an illusion. This is real. Oh, so very real. The walrus comes sliding across the door and he goes, Hello, friends! You came back! Welcome back! I'm glad to see you. Tell me, how was your trip? Did you have fun? <laughs> I spilled jelly on myself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we'll wrap up the evening for tonight. Mm. Or, geez, I need to go watch some cartoons. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As the blood is dripping off Leonard's hands. Jam. Raspberry jam. Jam. Ordell is in the corner vomiting. <laughs> Y'all, that was pretty intense. I'm sorry. That is literally by the book what is supposed to happen. Oh. And that's really freaking intense. Well, I'm so sure... Let's, de let's decompress that for just a little bit. Like, I'm sure the alternative, if you don't do it, you probably get attacked by magical wardens or golems or something. Mm. Or you just, it just won't let you. Uh, something or, different would have happened if you'd refused. Maybe you're, maybe you're groundhog day until you do it. You just can't get out. I'll say this as a DM. It's interesting to see whether you guys would do it or not. Wouldn't that be awful if like, no, we it spent wasn't uncanny, then I probably wouldn't have. It. I wouldn't play that game, Kenny. I wouldn't run that game. I almost feel dirty for running this, but I don't know how else to like modify it to make it not be this. Because you're in the chambers of an evil ice goddess. Valian Harpel looks over at all of you as you came over here and she goes, Damn. Yeah, yeah it wasn't great. That's an interesting uh, key, though, um, to, you know, to, to force people through trials that only somebody of her caliber could stomach. So if we are going to proceed and we're going to save this part of the world, which is, you know, tons and tons and tons of people and creatures and everything else, then uh, we've got to make it through these trials. And that means that we've got to we've got to become a little bit of the frost maiden in order to do it and if that's, what it, if that's what it is then that's what it is and 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 granite guts is okay with that morally gray pragmatism y'all cruelty is the worst gray. cruelty was the worst it, it i can't wait to see what perspiration is <laughs> <laughs> welcome to alabama <laughs> oh i bet you go to like a desert you sit no. there and sweat. You go to South Alabama or you know, New Orleans in August. Oh, Lordy. That was intense. I had oh, to end goodness. it after that. I'm sorry. Ooh. I'm not mentally prepared to run another trial this evening. I can't. I Who mean, if the next one, all we're doing is sweating. Gee. <laughs> it's not really perspiration. Oh, God. I can't believe I rolled a three. <laughs> Or a two. You're, you're all the two. Just like the slowest, most painful death you could have inflicted like, on with a person. spoon. They just started screaming, and I just, in a panic, just started, like, just stabbing and screaming. 
Instead, it was like from the fingertip. Oh my god! Use the uh, wrong end of the knife at first. <laughs> <laughs> it says here, bludgeon them with the hilt of the knife. Yeah. Uh. I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> oh It'll my die gosh! Eventually. Listen, I'm sorry. I know that was a bit intense. We need to probably put a content warning on that. The trigger yeah. trigger warnings on that. Um. Trigger warning, murder hobos. <laughs> Legit murder hobos do not take this. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, wow, y'all. Uh, I'm, I, I, I feel bad for running it, but I didn't know how else to run that. You know? And then we ended on that. It's like, all right, you just murdered a bunch of people. Uh, next week. You know, there'll be rainbows. Well, I tell you, I tell you what, we can, we can, we can edit that out. We can run another trial (laughs) next week. Maybe we'll find that book. We're off next week. We're off next week. Week after next. You know what? We got the worst over first, and and now just let's 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 get through the rest of the trials. And we spared two of our fellow humans from having to go through that. It really was compassion. Yeah. It really was compassion. By I, doing it first, we say is the, is souls. is that one of is that one of the most intense moments you all y'all have ever had in D anD D? Like, I, yeah, yeah, for me. I yeah. wanted to like kill all the barbarians, but then I was like, well, if we do that, that's what I was saying. I was like, what if we're doing killing the wrong people? Oh, that would have worked too. You know, I, I have to admit, I sort of. Uh, like is a strong word, but I appreciate mm. the fact that like it's not all, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, and yeah. the stakes here are kind of high. And so, you know, that means that you need to you're pro. It makes sense that occasionally you're going to have to be put in some really, or your characters, I should say, are going to have to be put in some really. Uh, uh, again, I'll use the word pragmatic. <laughs> Very Difficult pragmatic situations. situations. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, hey! At least you had a comic relief walrus. That's right. And he and Shrubwide and Yatara and Harkus have just been gibbering away about all degrees. That's why of you have sex. a com. That's why you have a comic relief walrus in this terrible place. <laughs> Everybody needs a comic relief walrus. Well, that was great. It was a great session. I'm sorry that it was intense. It was intense for me. I don't partic- didn't particularly like how that goes, but uh, but I think Granite Guts. I think you were right. It, the stakes. This is a horror. Uh, this is a horror sort of um, game. So I need to go watch Muppets. <laughs> I concur. Muppets. Yeah, Kermit murders a person. Oh my god, it's such a mouth, Kenny. Hey, you know what? The, there we go, the Dark Crystal. There you go. There's some up. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> but I'm not watching Dark Crystal because that will not bring me up here again. It'll keep me down here and like more nightmare fuel. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, everybody. I hope you guys had a good time. I had a good time. I had a horrible session. time. <laughs> 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 and on that note did you really <laughs> and on that bombshell <laughs> no just that last one then we end on that it's like oh my god where, where's kermit yeah i'm sorry i didn't want it to go till like 10 30 or something and i felt like if we ran another trial it was going to go another half hour yeah mm-hmm. it's okay all right well good night everybody we'll see you in two weeks night, y'all. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.